my name is Ryan Nell. We farm here in Beaverdam, Wisconsin. Um, we've been strip tilling now since the fall of 2015. Uh, our first bar was a Kuhn Kraus Gladiator 12 row. Uh, we started in the strip till with the intentions of stripping corn stalks in the fall for soybeans on 30 inch. Uh, the first year we had a, a Montag on and we had too small of a tractor, hydraulic issues, some other things. It was a, it was a, a bad transition, let's put it that way. Um, but we learned a lot from that first year. Um, we've been doing strip till soybeans now since 2015. It is the really only way we like to plant soybeans is on fall strips. Um, we did some corn the first couple years. Um, we do have some fields that stayed all strip till for corn and beans since 2015. But uh, the fall of, I guess, 2020 last year was finally our uh, full on commitment to strip till, uh, fall strip till, I should say. Um, so we stripped everything for beans last year, or last fall, and everything, about 80%. We stripped about 80% of the ground for corn for 2021. Um, we just kind of got to the point, we used to VT our soybean stubble in the fall, run a field cultivator in the spring. Um, we just found with strip till, uh, especially for corn, it's just the, the consistency of the stand, ease of planting, um, probably the best planting conditions you can find in the spring. Um, and it, the one thing we liked with strip till, especially for soybeans, is it gives us the best chance for the earliest planting date, but also the best conditions at that planting date. Um, when we can plant beans in the spring, on strip till, a lot of other people, if you're no till or full tillage, cannot get those type of conditions at the same time. So for us, it was kind of a natural transition over to corn. Um, like I said, we have been doing corn since 2015, but now for 2021, um, majority of our corn acres were all strip till and we couldn't be more happy with it considering how the spring went. Uh, we run a 20 row, 24 row planter for corn and a 12 row for beans. Each planter is set up identical to each other. And, uh, corn just was a nice, easy, very relaxing, smooth going, um, we actually finished, I believe it was April 30th. Uh, conditions were phenomenal. You know, the term we used this spring for both corn and beans was garden. Um, we really don't throw that around lightly, but it, it was, the conditions this spring were garden-like. You know, the ground was getting harder. We were in a bit of a dry uh, spell there for a while. But uh, the nice thing about strip till is you still had great adequate moisture down where the seed was going. Um, guys that were chisel plowing and working the ground a lot, they may not have that moisture there. Um, we have gotten rain since then, so you know, hopefully everything works out fine that way. But uh, you know, strip till for us has really made things easier. You know, it, it, it's it's the for a few for, for a few falls there. I mean, probably 2017, 18, 19, we were fighting rain, snow, everything. Um, it was a struggle. I'm, I'm not going to deny it. it was late nights, getting up early in the morning when the ground was slightly froze. Um, trying to manage the residue and get through it without plugging. But uh, every spring we would always tell ourselves it's worth the struggle. That's the one thing with strip till. It's not, I'm not going to say it's easy. You know, a fall like 2020 was awesome. You know, we, we strip till about 1600 acres with one 12 row and we could have done double that. Um, but you don't get falls like that every year. So it, um, it's really been a nice transition to it. Um, you know, the positives and negatives of all systems, you got to weigh everything. And for us, strip till going forward, it, ju it just makes the, it, it, it allows us to get more done in a, in a smaller amount of time. 